hi and welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about my hair journey from broken, brittle, fried bleached hair like this to this healthy natural hair. So let's get into it. Um, when I was 15, like most teenagers, I wanted to experiment with bleaching and coloring my hair. So I started with highlights and then that led to more highlights and then that led to full on bleached hair. At this time I was 15, I had just gotten into modeling and modeling is not good for your hair. The hairdressers fry your hair. I remember a hairdresser um, that did hair for Victoria's Secret was doing my hair and doing a tutorial for other hairdressers. And he said to everyone, oh yeah, so make sure that you have all of the curling irons, everything on the highest heat, because we want to get these curls done in and out really fast. Doesn't matter if you fry their hair off, you can, they can just add extensions later. So that was the beginning of my journey. So after a few years of getting my hair fried uh, from other people doing my hair and then bleaching my own hair, I realized I didn't want hair like this anymore. But that didn't stop me from experimenting. When I was in my early 20s, I decided to stop modeling and I wanted to have fun with my hair. I didn't want someone telling me what I could and couldn't do with how I looked anymore. So I had fun. I did like lavender and pink and all these fun colors. But what I didn't know was that there's semi-permanent and permanent hair color. Uh, I got permanent without knowing anything about it and it wouldn't come out. So I used detergent. I heard that you could use detergent on your hair and uh, to help get the color out. It worked a little bit, but then my hair was even more fried. And so I went to a hairdresser and I was like, you know what, just make my hair auburn. Just do that right over, you know, the neon pink that I had. Now, I don't think this is right and I don't think that they should have done this, but he did what was called a Sunday shampoo which was, oh, I'm gonna just add more bleach to your hair to bleach out the pink. And under the pink was bleached hair. I was in the salon for about nine hours or so and my hair looked like a bird's nest. It was all knotted up, like so broken. I could literally touch it and all of my hair would break off. So he goes, okay, let's just cut it all off. So I cut it all off, had super, super short hair, uh, had super short hair and started my journey with growing it out. At this point, I didn't know much about hair care and how to take care of it. I just knew that I wasn't gonna be dying at crazy colors anymore. So I went to black hair and then I went a little uh, lighter and getting highlights back to red hair and then I went back to black and I'm like what am I doing I need to stop doing this this isn't helping me um, so then I decided okay I have black hair at this point I'm going to lighten it up a bit and let my roots grow out so that's what I did and over time, it really was looking really good. Like my uh, natural was matching the lighter hair, so I wasn't coloring it anymore. Um, I started getting haircuts about every three months, probably an inch, two inches. More at the beginning, I was cutting a lot more off because I was just like, let's get rid of this dead hair. Um, and I found an amazing hairdresser. And I learned how important it is when you find a good hairdresser to stick with them. Like, just stay with them. If you like them, don't mess around with anyone else. They get to know your hair. And if they move salons, move salons with them. So at this point, I had a really good hairdresser. I was super happy. He knew my whole hair journey. 
we were cutting off the dead ends and I was like, you know, I feel like my hair is really dry. I should probably start using um, products that are really going to restore and hydrate and repair my hair. Uh, so I, I experimented with a lot of different uh, hair brands and one that I found that I really loved was Moroccan oil products. And my favorite of all time is the restorative hair mask. Now they have another hair mask. I think it has a brown lid to it and it's just a hydration one, which you use as just a normal hair mask. This one you put on and uh, leave on for about five minutes. I like to brush it uh, in and to really coat the hair um, all over. I'll start from like right under the ears and down and then put a like clip in it. Um, and then after that, rinse it out and put a normal um, conditioner in and then leave that in. So if there's like one of the main things I could say about with hair care products is when you're in the shower, leave it in as long as you can. It's gonna do the best work. So that's what I started with. Then I started adding in um, my aftercare products, which for your hair, I mean, you gotta think of it like this, like you're putting products in your hair when you're in the shower and then you're washing them out. So they're not getting the full like potential that it could be doing for your hair. So what you use after is your holy grail. So what I started using after was a leave-in conditioning spray. I really like this one by Kristen S. You can get it at Target. And since I have really thick hair, I spray a bunch of it. Like, I think they recommend like 15, 20 sprays. Oh, five to 10, I do about 20. Um, but I don't do it up at the root so that it doesn't get greasy. Um, and then I found this amazing product from my hairdresser called uh, R Co. Now they have a lot of amazing products. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's vegan um, and gluten-free uh, products. And this one is their Shine Cream. It really helps with uh, my frizz and maintaining it and making it sleek. So I'll do about a dime size amount of this. Mix it in my hands after I get out of the shower um, and put it in from mid length to the ends. Now with that, I spray this on. And I should probably mention right when I get out of the shower, I use a microfiber uh, towel and I really try to get all that excess water out to help with drying time and frizz. My favorite oil to use is either the Moroccan oil or the Olaplex oil. Um, I don't have the other product with me, but I love doing a few drops of this mixed with the Olaplex bonding cream. It's amazing together. It works so much better when you use it together. Um, if you use that, you don't need to use this. As of right now, I'm not using any Olaplex products because I looked online and I don't think that they're safe to use while pregnant. So if I'm not using the Olaplex cream and oil, I'm using this while I'm pregnant. Um, and then my other favorite product from Olaplex, if you have damaged hair, bleached hair, whatever it is, is the Olaplex number three. Now, I like to use this about every two weeks or so when I'm not pregnant. And what you do is you get in the shower, you get your hair wet, then towel dry it so it's just a little bit damp. And I'll section off my hair in probably about four sections. Start from the bottom, work my way up, and I'll saturate my hair in this and then brush it in the shower with this and then put it in a shower cap uh, for about 40 minutes. 
So I think it says to use for 10 minutes, but it definitely works better if you use it longer. I'm pretty sure that it stops working after 45 minutes or so. So that's why I don't do it any longer than that. Um, and then my favorite shampoo and conditioner are these guys. Now I got these when I found out I was pregnant because I didn't want to be using anything that could harm my baby. And these are totally safe for that. Uh, they smell amazing too. They have a lot of different um, kinds for different hair types. This one's uh, for anti-breakage, long hair, love it. Uh, let's see, other than that, uh, hair ties. Use scrunchies, um, use anything that's silk. I love these slip silk hair ties from Sephora. Oh, sleeping. You want to make sure you're using a silk pillowcase while you sleep. Like this guy. Um, they're amazing. Not only do they feel amazing, but they're great for your skin because you're not creating the creases in your face, which will cause wrinkles when you get older. Um, but they're not causing friction against your hair. So you're not going to be getting knots while you sleep and uh, making your hair frizzy. It's just a must. Just do it, please, for me. Thank you. And then my last step, oh, not my last, my second to last, is I wash my hair about every five days, sometimes even longer. Um, I don't have greasy hair, which I'm thankful for and very lucky, um, but try to go as long as you can without washing it. It will save your hair. You don't need to be stripping all the oils out and losing all that hydration. And when I go about the fourth or fifth day, I will use this Mason Pearson hairbrush. Now this guy is amazing but I will say I only use it uh, once a week, the night before, the day before I wash my hair, because with having some waves and curls, it makes my hair a bit poofy. But what this brush is amazing for is distributing your oils. And it really stimulates hair growth and gets like the scalp stimulated and moving. So I will sit at the edge of my bed like a woman from the Victorian era and just slowly from the top to the bottom, brush my hair for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And it gets so shiny and really helps to distribute my natural oils to help give it shine and make it healthier. Um, so yeah, this is my go-to. It has really helped me over the years and you just, you can't forget about your hair, guys. You take care of everything else. You brush your teeth. You take care of your skin. You take care of, you know, your body from the inside out. Your hair, don't forget about your hair. Um, so yeah, I will list these products below and I hope you try them and love them as much as I do.